Welcome back. Today we're going to go over the dash mounted filterette, what it was for, and the installation process. My name is Ron Fitzpatrick, proprietor of G503.com, RFJP.com, and many other online sites. The radio filter serves no purpose in modern times unless you're running World War II radios in your Jeep. That being said, for the MBGPW, generally speaking, we call the filterette the one mounted under the dash with the three inductive capacitor filters in one housing. There are filters, capacitors all over the place, and to make it more fun, the early type one suppression used a combination of filters, capacitors, and the filterette. Whereas the type two late suppression abandoned the filterette and mounted individual filters and capacitors in additional locations. There are several models of the filterette that is mounted under the dash and made by many different manufacturers for the Ford GPW and Willys MB. These companies did not all use the same vendors all the time. At the end of the video, I'll do some rolling shots of different filterettes used on MB GPWs. With that, let's install the filterette. Let's begin by looking at the mounting location for the filterette. If you notice here, right underneath the bracket for the air filter, there is a spot here where it's tinned. Now, I taped this off before I primed and painted the tub, so I've got a lot of the good tinning left on there. Now, if you'd like to, during your installation, you could also retin these. You could use the tinning butter or actually tin them the correct way themselves. Here we have the filterette, and you see here we've got a cluster of three capacitors that are in line with connections on either side with screws, and that goes on the inside of this cover. I've taken this cover. It is a Willis-marked cover, as you see here with the nice tag that's on the front there, and I just masked that off and repainted it, the 33070 Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts OD Green that I've been using to paint the Jeep with. I've got four reproduction EC bolts, marked bolts. They're 5 16s by 18 by 3 quarters of an inch. And I've also got the bond strap from my Joe's Motor Pool kit, bond strap kit. And I've also got, I bought some modern star washers that I'm going to be using for the install of this. Now this is going to function. It would work if we did have a radio and, and the way it's suppressed. This probably wouldn't have been the way it was installed. As if I've researched this, there's multiple ways that these uh, units have been installed on these tubs. I'm just going to do a very basic installation I've seen multiple times in multiple pictures. On the inside of the firewall here, you can see the firewall pad, and we've got our four holes that are pre-drilled, as well as the grommet there where the wires are going to come through the firewall. Also note here in the front here, we've got these two studs in the, in the tub, and those are for the junction block. I'm going to insert one of the bolts with the head facing towards the engine compartment and we'll face the other one the same way with the head facing the engine compartment. These bolts are going to go different ways at the top and you see these two studs are on the inside here of the firewall we're going to mount the filter itself. The capacitors that are on this unit and in line here on this bracket have the letters facing up so you want those facing upward and we're just going to simply going to slip these two bottom holes on this unit here over the top of those two bolt studs that came through from the front and then we'll install the lock washer and the nut on those. I'm only going to tighten these hand tight for the time being. When you're working on these old Jeeps, it helps a lot of times if you've got multiple fasteners to just fasten them hand tight. That way you've got yourself a little bit of wiggle room if you have to make any adjustments for your piece to fit in. It goes true for just about every part that I've put on this 43 Willis MB since the beginning. Uh, I'm going to back the camera up here now and show you these letters that I told you went straight up. They're located upside, so that way you've got that in order there. It seems to be the way that they works on all the filters. So we've got our bolts in here. Now let's take a look here at the top because this is where we're going to change up a little bit with how we install the bolt. I have to locate my bonding strap from my Joe's Motor Pool kit that I've got with all the bond straps in it. And this is the one that goes from the flashing spot there or the tin spot there on the cowl that attaches to the fuel line. Here we've got our cover again. I'll show you this bond strap. Notice the one smaller hole at the other side. And I've got myself some modern star washers that I'm going to be using. I'm using two of them. I'm going to use one to pinch from the inside to the tinning on the cowl. I'm going to use the other to pinch on the outside here just to make a nice good bond and make sure everything's secure and nice. Looking from the inside underneath the cowl there, you're going to go to the top right corner of the filterette and then feed the bolt through into the firewall so the threads are facing the firewall this time. You see how I'm kind of wiggling this through here and it's going to protrude out so we can attach our bonding strap and our star washers to it. I'm going to go ahead and install a star washer right inside that bolt and then touching the tinning. Now sometimes I've seen photographs and some people have talked about this and the, the bonding strap would go right to that tinning and that's okay too. 
I'm installing a star washer there on purpose so I can get a nice good bite to what tinning I do have left, which is in good shape as I said in the beginning of the video, but I'm just going to make sure that's a good, secure, and tight connection to that metal. I'll go ahead and install another star washer on the outside of the bond strap, and then I'll install the lock washer and the nut. At this time, I'm not going to completely tighten that up as we're going to be doing a video that directs all the bonding straps into one video, and I want to leave that open there so I can make that video and show you where each and every individual strap is located on the G503 Jeep. Again, just got this hand tight, but I do have it horizontally here as this is going to be attached to this fuel line in the near future. The last bolt that we got to put through the filterette here is the one right behind the bracket there for the air cleaner. As you see, those have got it painted OD green, and the head faces the engine compartment on that one. Here's some examples of the different manufacturers that have made filterettes for the G503 Jeeps. You can see here these two are Ford GPW marked. It's kind of fancy and nice. And then we've got some plain ones. There was multiple, as Ron mentioned in the beginning of the video, manufacturers. Toby seems to be one of them that is very common. That's the one I've got on the 1943 Willis MB. You can see here there's a bunch of them. Now that this filterette is installed on the 1943 Willis MB. We can move forward now with continuing our series on the wiring. If you'd like to subscribe to Team G503, you can do so by hitting the subscribe button there at the bottom of the screen, and we look forward to seeing you again in the near future.